Okie dokie. Take two. Yeah, my computer rebooted, and um, now it just decided my microphone wasn't going to work, so. Yay. Uh, so the question we have is, how do VO rates work, and how do I determine my rates? And that can be a really spiky question, can it? Because you're basically asking someone, how much do you get paid? Um, but it's also a very valuable question because it's one that you kind of need to know when you're starting off. And that's with any freelance work, right? Um, and I'll tell you what, I've been kind of modeling my approach to this as far as like answering questions like this. And I, I'm going to preface this with knowing that I am not the foremost expert. There are people out there that are way more experienced in voiceover than I am. But um, I figure maybe in a way I'm a little bit closer to people who are getting started off than the veterans. And it's not to take away from the veterans. There's some really awesome, awesome people. Some very cool, awesome people that have been very helpful along the way to myself, to others who are very giving of their time and advice and encouragement. Um, but then there's a lot of folks that are not. They're very gatekeepery. Um, I've had experience with both. But anyway, that's not the question. The question's about rates. So how do we determine that? Because when you start, you're not going to want to, you can't charge. You just can't charge the top tier rates. You're brand new. I'm brand new. I still can't charge top tier rates. Um, so I would say the first thing is check out. So when I set my rates, and I try to be pretty open with my rates because as far mm -hmm. as what I'm doing, because what do I have to lose? What do I have to lose by sharing what I'm doing with other people? Um, it doesn't hurt anyone to know how the formula works, if you want to call it that. But anyway, so when I, when I figured out, when I was figuring out my rates, I went to the, uh, the GVAA rate guide. And I'll put a link in the uh, in the description. But I went to the GVAA rate guide, and that's sort of like the the I don't want to say it's like the 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 commandments of rates because I don't think that's I don't think that's accurate. It's more like the Rosetta Stone of rates and interpreting what we should do because there's so many factors that go into determining how much we charge for a project. And even then it's going to be negotiable, I feel. So but that's a good place to start. So when I started, I started with the GVAA rate guide. And I knew as a beginner, um, I was going to be at the bottom of that scale. Um, but the GVAA rate guide is nice because it is essentially based off of the SAG-AFTRA contract. So that's sort of like the industry standard for what we should be charging for our rates. Um, and if you're doing union work, that would be obviously what, what the rates would be. But um, I also knew I might be going beneath that a little bit at times. But I would I charged at the bottom end of that. So, for instance, when I started, and again, there's a lot of things that go into determining how much you're going to charge for a project. How long is it going to be? How long will it take me? What's it going to be used for? How difficult is the language? How many projects am I going to get through this? Um, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot. Hurley has Hurley has some opinions about this, apparently. Um, there's a lot that's going to go into making those decisions, determining what the rate's going to be. Um, but yeah, I started at the lower end of it. Um, with the knowledge so whenever i do send out when someone asks for my rates i have a rate card that i will send out um but i also plainly say this is negotiable because a maybe the um it could be that the client whoever that is just doesn't have a budget for a 350 dollars or 500 dollars session fee but if they're in the neighborhood of what's reasonable, then yeah, I might be willing to do it. If it's going to be like a two-minute read 
for a 30 second read yeah I'm, I'm, I'm willing to negotiate on that um, I'd say alright so generally speaking like my session fee is like I want to say I can't remember the last time I looked at it um, it's like 300 325 and what you know and that gets you a recording basically you're buying an hour renting an hour of my time in the booth um, that does not get you an hour of finished audio. That's different. An hour of finished audio is different because it's going to take me more than an hour to record that. But that's where I start because I look at it like if I start at this number, I feel like that's a fair number for my time. And if that's in your budget, awesome. Then everyone's happy. If it's if your budget is below that, then we can negotiate and we can talk about and see what's reasonable. If your budget is above that, either A, I'm hoping that the person, if they're honest, can say, well, we were hoping that, you know, we can actually pay more than that. Usually if they have that kind of budget, they're kind of upfront with it. And again, this is all with folks that are, when we're, when they're coming to me with a project or something like that, hey, they'll ask me what, what my rates are. A lot of stuff that I audition for, um, actually, I just see the rate up front and I can make a decision. Um, but this way I feel like I'm not, if, if I am leaving money on the table, it's not a lot. It's not going to break the bank literally or figuratively. It's going to allow me to pay the bills. Um, but then it also allows me to come down a little bit in price. Now, yeah, if it's super cheap, like I saw some stuff the other day where, and it might've been a student project. So I will put the caveat that if it's a student project, I get it. There's no budget at all. Um, but I saw it where they wanted like two hours of work and they were going to pay 25 or 50 bucks. No, I'm not going to turn on the mic for that. That's too low. Um, within reason, you know, maybe it is a really cool student project. Maybe I know the person. And again, there's a whole bunch of factors that go in there. Um, so, but I would just say, yeah, you have to be honest with yourself because it's like, where are you in your career? But you start, start with a GVAA rate guide. That is a good place to start. Don't undersell yourself. Um, because good luck asking for a raise. Once you've worked with a client for a certain amount of money, it is really hard to say, well, my rates went up. Um, a lot of times they just might decide not to work with you. And that's because that's what their budget is. And, and I'm not, I'm not ascribing any, um, I'm not assuming bad behavior or bad faith. I'm not assuming that they are going after the absolute cheapest work possible. Are there people like that? Yes. I have worked for people like that in my professional life. Um, but I'm not ascribing that behavior. I'm just assuming the budget is what it is. Not all companies have the ability to pay the full union rate. Um, now, where I do get a little less flexible is when we get to broadcast and commercial work, if it's being used in broadcast uh, and there's a release involved, that's where I'm going to get a little bit more to be a bit more of a stickler. Um, I don't do a lot of work like that, so it doesn't come up that often, but that's where I would be. I'm going to adhere a little bit more closely to the GVAA uh, rate card. But that... Yeah, I start... I mean, honestly, if you're just getting started, you got to start where everyone else started, at the bottom. Um, and you might feel like it's too low unless you can justify to a client why you're worth more than, and I don't mean you as a person, that your work product is worth more than the lower tier of, of, of the lower end of the scale. Then that's where you're going to start. And you'll do a few projects that way. And then you slowly raise the rates over time. That's going to be in due to what you're comfortable with, what your demand for your time is, what your skills are, what do you bring to the table that no one else does. And it's a whole bunch, I guess, that a whole bunch of factors. There's no one number. Um, but yeah, but you, the other thing you run into is I thought some of them were too high. I thought something like, man, am I, is my time really worth that? Am I going to scare people away? The one thing I'll tell you is don't be scared to ask for the money. Um, don't 
feel like you have to undersell yourself. Don't feel like you have to take pennies on the dollar. That if the st- if you're seeing that session fee should be two hundred dollars or two hundred and fifty dollars, but you're seeing a job for fifty, again, I'm not paying your bills, so I can't tell you how to make your money and what to charge. But don't undersell yourself. Don't be like, well, I'm only going to charge fifty bucks, where everyone else is charging two hundred. One, you're underselling, you're, you're undervaluing yourself. I'm, I'm going to guarantee you that. If you've had training, if you have a professional demo, if you've taken the time and have skin in the game, um, you're worth you're worth it. Your time is worth it. Um, the other thing is, d- don't don't play the game where you're underselling everyone. You know, um, you're only hurting yourself. You're hurting your you're hurting the industry if you undercharge constantly. And there's folks out there that do that, and they make money. But. I mean, is it going to destroy the industry? No, no, I don't believe that. It would have been destroyed years ago if that had happened, uh, if that were the case. But yeah, I don't know if that helps. <laughs> I don't know if any of this really helps with the rate question. Um, yeah, I just say start with the GVAA rate guide and try to be, even if you're at the bottom end of it, even if you're going to go below some of those rates, which again is your choice be reasonable about it don't go so far under um but have confidence with yourself and be willing to negotiate you know i could stick hard to saying no my session fee is this it is a 350 dollars session fee well our budget is 250 or our budget is 275 or my session fee is 325 and they only want to charge 200 well all right I mean, it's 150 bucks percentage wise. That's a big chunk of money. Yeah. If we talk percentages, but just in terms of real life day to day, am I going to, am I going to sacrifice getting paid at all over the course of for a hundred bucks? Probably not. Again, it depends on the project. I don't know if that helps. I hope it does. Please let me know if that helps. (laughs) <laughs> please let me know if that helps. I'm not trying to be ambiguous. I'm not trying to be secretive. Um, it's just, it's a really big question. So, please, like I said, let me know if that helps. And if you have other questions about that, please let me know. Because I feel like, I truly feel like the only way anyone gets good at anything is through having a mentor, is through having someone to kind of be their rabbi, to, to shepherd people through. And it's usually more than one person. And I don't feel like there's anything to be gained about being secretive about rates, about how people go about marketing, about where we find jobs. There's enough work out there for everyone. Um, yeah, I think in the macro that there's enough work for everyone. Yeah, I mean, will some things be eroded if we everyone knows everyone's business? Yeah, a little bit. But the folks who are really going to make a go at this are the ones who have the toughness to stick with it, to stay in the game. Um, Because this is not an easy way to make a living, um, even part-time. And if you're not willing to put the work in and not willing to take your lumps, then you're not going to make a living doing this. It's just the way that this way freelancing works, the way that being in a creative industry works. So that's why I'm not too worried about it. But again, I hope this helps. Um, Yeah, I really, I I hope it helps. I know I repeat myself a lot at the end of these things, but um, let me know, hit me up if if you feel like this does help or if it doesn't, or if you have other questions about it. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Please, if you could take a moment, subscribe down below so you could support the channel. If you have any questions, you can absolutely reach out to me via social media at the St. Brian on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you need to book me for voiceover projects, you can get me at voxbrian.com. And if you ever want to work with me for private coaching, for voiceover, to get ready for a demo, for audition help, you can reach out to Edge Studio and they can uh, book my time for uh, coaching purposes. So thank you so much and thank you for the support uh, for the channel.